you should learn coding. It's very good because in VLSI also we need coding, right? If you want to go to IT field, you need coding. But don't use coding as a skip code. Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. So today's podcast episode gonna be a little different. Today I'm not gonna ask question to anyone, but I will face the questions. So who gonna ask me questions? Actually today we have Ronak with us. He actually just uh, started his BTEC in one of the best college of engineering in Bangalore. Now he have many questions in his mind about how to become a VLSI engineer. And I thought you also probably having the same question. So I thought why not answer those in front of the camera. So let's get started. First of all, I will ask that what is your daily routine? Mm-hmm. Like it's the main issue. Like people are sleeping at four o'clock and waking up at ten, and they are mismanaging their sleep cycle. So how do you manage that? Okay, like you are asking after becoming a VLSI engineer, yeah. like what? Yeah. See, these things again depend on person. There are few mm-hmm. people who are very good uh, at night, yeah. right? So what they do, they in the daytime probably they are not working as effectively as they need to, and in the night time they do those things. But the main thing is that you need to sleep for six to seven hours, right? So you can sleep it afternoon also, yeah. or in the night time also. So my objective is that that just shift it to the night time, in real time, because that time like there are many medical benefits are there, are many hormonal excretion are going on. So that's why I generally. What I do, and that is, I follow the strict rule. M- mostly 11 on 11:30 p.m. I sleep, and I try to wake up at six. But yeah, most of the days, so may become seven. So for yeah. maintaining your health, mm-hmm. what particularly you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For maintaining my health, the main thing, the main priority, I have many things, but the main priority I give, and they, those are my uh, yoga, right? And in, in in yoga also, I do some special type of yoga, and one of them I learned from Art of Living actually. It's called Sudarshan Kriya. So that is my priority. I okay. do it around forty to one hour in the morning, yeah. and after that, if I have some time, then in the evening I can go for gym also. So. Yeah. so taking you as an ideal so what not ideal <laughs> not an ideal okay so what a student of a first year or like in also in second year what he have to do to achieve this kind of jobs mm, okay nice question so actually you don't consider me as an ideal because okay. during my btech time i i i love electronics but during my btech time i have never followed what need to be followed and that's why probably i can give guide you nicely because i know what you should not do the first thing you should not do and that is never ever like say say that hey cgpa is not important it is very mm-hmm. much important and ne- you should learn coding it's very good because in vlsi also we need coding right if you want to go to it field you need coding but don't use coding as a skip code that okay. hey i i am unable to learn those concept maths uh, electronic subjects and then let me learn coding so that i can manage my parents that hey coding is important and these things are not important don't do this thing that's the main thing and the second would be try to find out the connection between all subjects you have maths 1 2 3 i guess yeah. probably and there are many different topics would be there right and if you just learn those topic it would be very dry you don't know what are the applications right so my suggestion would be try to connect your maths with the concepts right so yeah your professor will help your top um, seniors will help for sure for so this. how does the cgpa particularly helps mm-hmm. like is cgpa worth or like coding is worth uh both are important right M- but which is the most yeah most is cgpa and why one is very simple and that is you probably have 100 plus batch yeah. right so in 100 plus batch if any company come right and they need to select only 10 people then how they will shortlist they can't take 100 people's interview right yeah. so the easiest way they will conduct a exam for sure but then also all will have similar marks to shortlist yeah. it they will take the cgpa for sure that's the yes, main thing and also CGPA. If you have a high CGPA like eight plus nine plus, then by default your concept would be good. Otherwise, yeah. you can't score eight nine plus, yeah. right? And what are the extracurricular activities you do mm. after your work? Yeah, so here mostly what happen after anybody come to um, corporate, they forget about extracurricular activity. We do in our colleges, and we must do those because. This is the extracurricular activity. For example, Ronak is taking my interview, right? <laughs> so these are the these are the things which developed your soft skill, like uh, how you should communicate, and those things actually paid off in our uh, corporate world, right? Skills anybody can learn, but those soft skill they take a long time. 
So yeah, in your college you should do extracurricular activity and for me what I do, uh, mostly we have many clubs here in in my job. So one of the club I, I, I'm a member, so I keep on organizing few uh, few like uh, events for them, so like that. But yeah, in corporate there are not many chances you will get for doing for extracurricular activity. So what particularly you contribute to your company? in what feels like okay yeah i can say in a bird eye view because i can't say everything right yeah, <laughs> yeah. so see um, most of you mostly don't know uh, we have mosfet if you are in first year second year electronics probably don't know what is a mosfet right but it's a device you probably have heard about nanometer right yeah. uh, four nanometer so now apple has released three nanometer chips so what happened um, for me like what i do or our team do and that is we do the r and d for example, currently in market, we have three nanometer chip, right? And now we want to shrink it to one nanometer. You will ask me why should we shrink it to one nanometer? And that is, as you shrink it, if you keep the same design, same architecture, everything are same, but you just shrink the size of your device, that MOSFET or BJT, then the performance will increase a lot without you doing anything. But to shrink it down, you need to do R&D. You need to do you need to develop test chip beforehand then only if my test chip is working on that shrinked feature then only i can yeah. tell my product committee hey go for one nanometer so we do r d here okay. mostly to in reduce the size of the transistor and also to optimize our layout mode like i am working on the back end back end of the VLSI design and particularly for like uh, nowadays people are doing like only joining CSE and mm -hmm. lower branches seats are empty so what are your particular views about the future of electronics and communication engineering as I am an easy engineer. So. <laughs> so this question, I'm not a perfect guy to answer because I will be heavily biased toward EC. Okay. <laughs> because I belong to EC, right? And those, if you are from CSE or you love CSE, then just um, ignore me. But still, uh, according to me, right? If you are from CSE, you can go to both the field. Your VLSI field also and coding field also. I have many people who are from EC and they are working on Microsoft, Facebook top uh, notch company of CSE, right? But there are a very little chance if you are from CSE and you can come to as a VLSI engineer and do, but there are exceptions. There are many people who yeah. do CSE BTEC and then do, they do their master in EC and they come here as a hardware engineer. In Intel, my uh, hardware company like Intel we have, then Apple we have, we have Qualcomm we have, there also CSC people have their job because we need to write like, firmware. There are many coding that are required. Right? So they can come as a software engineer. But to come as a VLSI engineer is really tough. So if you love circuits, then I will strongly suggest you, you should go for EC. What is the particular, you can describe in short, like what we will study in EC, mm -hmm. like VLSI and all. Mm -hmm. So in if I uh, tell about VTEC, so VTEC is just the introduction to electronics. So here, mostly up to th three or third year, you won't be having any specialized subject for VLSI. But having said that, from first year onward, actually you start going for yeah your VLSI. For yes. example, in first year, you have uh, basic electrical or electronics? Electronics. Electronics. So there you will be learning about BJT. Yeah. Um, uh, if I for, don't forget, then MOSFET will also be there probably. Yeah. So those are the building block of your VLSI, right? And there you also learn one a great subject and that is called semiconductor physics, which yes. is very important for backend if you want to design your layout and that work I'm doing, right? Semiconductor physics play a huge role. And to learn your semiconductor physics, you need to learn your maths one, two, and three. There are differential equation. Differential equation is very much important for learning your yeah, yeah. semiconductor yeah, yeah. physics. Yeah. So you will learn this part, like circuit part, and also in EC, you will learn the communication part. Yeah. So in communication part, we again have uh, like antenna, you will, you will read about like introduction to antenna, those things. Uh, there would be many algorithms are there for digital signal processing, yeah. FFT, those things. And again, to learn those algorithms, you need to have the maths. Maths is like the like basic. Like yeah. if we have a cake, then base is the same for all cake, right? So, so math is needed. So very important as I said that before. How will you describe your four year of BTEC? Mm -hmm. Not a, I'm asking for your postgraduate, I'm asking for your BTEC because I'm a BTEC. Mm -hmm. So I will discover mistakes particularly, which we won't have to, have to occur like in our lives. Yeah. One I have already said that CGP. Yeah, one. CGP. Okay. One. Another one I think we should spend more time with our uh, senior, okay? And not any any senior, right? I respect yeah. to all senior, but not any senior. I will suggest, strongly suggest, uh, get along with the senior who have a high CGPA. Nine, uh, nine is very nice. 
okay okay because they know the concepts they will motivate you to really get a high cgpa if you get along with the four cgp or five cgp senior they will demotivate you like them only that hey it is not required because they want the that one yesterday i saw uh, <laughs> saw a meme that one of the senior tell to a junior that yeah, peace from place engineering stands for placement <laughs> <laughs> and another mistake i have one professor in my btech days and he used to tell us that hey you should not spend your time in the hostel hostel is only for sleeping please spend your time in the department so for the first second year probably you won't have much exposure to department labs but from third year onward i'll strongly suggest you spend your 60 to 70 percent time in the department only in department lab only and in first second year also you'll have many labs are there for example mm -hmm. you have one wonderful theorem called norton theorem okay their theorem have the lab practical also i don't know what i did there but you should ask your lab attendant that hey why we are doing it and after doing it you just compare with your theory that the mathematical analysis you have done in your copy is it exactly matching with your lab and do the same thing for all the labs class and for the theory class this is very important this thing directly won't fetch you any good mark but this will fetch you the concept which we need in the higher study like top third year fourth year because i know this so that's why when i was in my mtech i spend mostly 70 to 80 percent time in my department in library only and that is a fact <laughs> my last question would be like uh, uh, coming to second year or coming to third year i find that electronics is not my cup of tea mm -hmm. and i have taken for four year course so mm -hmm. how to like i want i want like like uh, to do job in after i want i like that automation engine uh, field is more probable to me mm -hmm. or some other fields mm -hmm. so or like i want to go to business so how to switch like okay um yeah you can switch actually that's the good news and uh, yeah the main thing would be after third year or any time if you realize it in first year then yeah. you can switch that's easy because you can do branch change also yeah. but yeah after second year third year if you realize that yeah ec is not my cup of tea then my first suggestion would be first complete the thing what you have started complete the uh, what called btech degree don't drop in between i i never believe on dropping out of anything if you have started you should show your commitment that hey i can finish it finish it with anything 4 cgpa 5 cgpa 6 cgpa no issue then you can go for gate for example he said he want to go to automation or probably ai you know hey in ai i can do a great thing then you can write or you can prepare for the gate paper for yeah. the AI. Now we have for data science, there is a special gate paper is there. Or you can prepare for the CSE gate paper, right? And then you can directly get entry, in, entry into a MTech of AI or anything mm. like robotics. I want to go to, from electronics only from, actually robotics have three domains, yeah. electronics, mechanical, yeah. CSE. From those three, you can go. So yeah, gate is a perfect example by which you can switch your field. And for business, you can prepare for GATE and you can, so no, CAT, Get. CAT, and you can go for MBA. There are a lot of examples who go for CAT and they are earning a huge money now. Yeah. This was my last question. <laughs> <laughs> All the questions are clear. Okay, now I have a, one question for okay. you. So you just started your BTEC, right? Yes. Yeah. So how you are finding it? Like, for example, in class 12, you have a, like before you start your engineering, yeah. you might have some perspective. Yeah. And now you have a, some perspective after you yeah. go on inside. So does the, those things are different? Or yeah, it's what? totally yeah. different. Before, like 12, I was completely focused on my entrance exam, like joint entrance exam, like different, different entrance exam. So after coming to college, I uh, came, my induction program is going on. So I explored my college and I found it that not only like uh, we have to not only sticks on the books, like we have too many labs, we have too many industry exposures. We have to go with that also and particularly like book knowledge also. Both of them is important. Yeah. Thanks Rana, for asking this question and helping all of your friends, seniors and my juniors, brother and sister. Okay. We'll see you in our next video. Till then. Tata bye bye and keep smiling.